You won't believe how the fastest sprinters in the world train. This is Dylan Carter from the Trinidad and Tobago and he is fast. He has medals from both the World Championships and the Commonwealth Games in the 50 meter butterfly and freestyle events and he sometimes does less than 500 meters a session. Today, I'm going to be flying all the way to Antibes in the south of France to link up with Dylan for one of his fast training sessions. Today, I'm pulling back the curtain and showing you exactly how the fastest swimmers in the world train and maybe you can learn something from it. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for more. Dylan's pool warm-up is not very long, but that being said, he does get to the pool early and do a long dry land routine, mostly consisting of bands. He then gets in the pool and does a range of drills. He's already pretty warm by this point, so he's mainly dialing his technique to get ready to swim fast. He done some drills where he's pushing down the board and then some single arm stuff, just trying to get a feel of the catch. All of this was about 200 meters in total, and then he wanted to warm the legs up so he got on the kickboard and went a 50 where he kicks nice and easy and then he puts the board into a tombstone position and does a three to four second burst of speed against the resistance of the tombstone board. He done three bursts of speed within this 50 meters and that was his warm up. That was it, about 250 meters in total. <laughs> It was then time for the main set, and he decided that we were gonna do four 50s. The 50s would consist of an easy 25, no breath, and then you could take one or two breaths as you scold out to the five meter mark before ripping a 20 meters all out from a dead start position. Now the idea of this is that even in a short course pull, you can train the last 20 meters of a 50 freestyle, the event that Dylan is training for, and his primary event for the Paris Olympic Games. He will also swim the 100 meter event there as well. Now you've probably done a back end speed set for a 100 free or a 200 fly or something like that, but maybe you've never done a back end speed set for a 50 freestyle or a 50 stroke event, but it's still very important, especially in long course, because you've probably felt yourself tie up and fatigue towards the end of the race. And that is absolutely what can happen even at the elite level. So practicing that back end speed after a little bit of hypoxic work and having to generate power from a stationary position is great back end speed work and super vital for a long course 50 at this level. We were taking metrics like stroke rate and make sure and he was maintaining the stroke rate all the way into the finish while also making sure he holds the power as well. Dad even got involved and done some breaststroke. He is racing at the US Masters meet on a relay with me, Brett and Nate, just in what, a week's time now. Now you're probably wondering how much rest we were having on these 50s. And as you can see, we were doing them one at a time and we were cycling through pretty nicely. So Dylan would do a 50, I would do a 50, then dad would do a 50. So that probably meant we were going on roughly five minutes and we were just recovering on the side. No swim down. Dylan sometimes did a 50 between them. I think he only did a 50 after the first one and after that, we kind of just sat on the side and caught a breath back while the other people went. And I was really happy with how my stroke was looking for what it's worth. This is some of the best freestyle I think I've done in a long time. Maybe I was inspired by how good Dylan was. Then for the final round, we decided to shoot up. And obviously I had the new Sprint Revolution parachute and I was showing it off to Dylan. He was comparing it to the tried and testy Finney's parachute. And we basically worked out that they're a very similar size and the Sprint Revolution one is awesome. Sprint Revolution, great parachute, check out their products. Brett Hawke is doing an awesome job with them. And for that fourth and final 50, we upped the ante, we put a parachute on, and that really tested us. We've got a little bit of fatigue from the first three efforts, and this was like a super powerful thing. We mainly worked with Dylan on increasing the stroke rate. He started off a little bit low at about 52 rate, and this one was spot on at the end, hitting like a 59 stroke rate. And I think his stroke was really connected. He was also working on making sure he pushed through the back of his recovery and didn't get like a little bit of a lallop or gallop stroke. So he was accelerating out into the recovery, and that's what 
really help him get his stroke rate up without pulling harder or faster. He was pulling the same with the same efficiency and just sped up that first phase of the recovery, which ended up meaning he was as efficient and powerful in the distance of stroke with a high stroke rate, which literally is an equation to being faster. Anyhow, this is my last one with a parachute. I, I wanna get my hips a little bit more connected, but just in terms of the session that we've done, this is no exaggeration. This is a world-class session, and I'm, I'm being straight, it was about 250 meters warm up and 450s. There was no swim down. So Dylan Carter's entire session, it took about an hour, was 450 meters long. That's how you can put together one of the best speed sessions in the world. Because Dylan only trains once a day in the pool, we then spent the rest of the day checking out the Isle Marguerite, which was this beautiful island off the coast of Cannes, and we had a great time. There was this like underwater museum with these massive face sculptures underwater, and me, the family, Dylan, all had a great time exploring. Because the sessions Dylan does are so high intensity, he never works hard or goes fast two days in a row. So the day after that session we done, the 450 meter session, he swam about 1300 meters, mostly drills and aerobics, and then practiced a few starts at the end. You can see some start movements he was doing on land before ripping these awesome starts. That, and Dylan's maybe one of the best underwater kickers in the world, which helps his start look really good. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and let me know in the comments what sprint session you would love to do. Thanks again, and see you on the next one.